Hi, my name is Jamie Thompson and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrates the capabilities of Cozy Rock Software's suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. The demonstrations herein were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2008, however the Cozy Rock tasks and components are available for both SQL Server Integration Services 2005 and 2008 in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. In this video, we're going to talk about Cozy Rock's Table Difference Component. What the Table Difference Component enables you to do is to compare two incoming streams of data to basically find the difference between them. It can show you any rows that are in one of the incoming streams that isn't in another one. It can show you all the rows that are different and it can show you all the rows that haven't changed at all. So, before we get into the demo, we better install this thing into our toolbox. The way we do that is go to Choose Items. Let's go to SSIS Data Flow Items. Uh, if we scroll down, we will find Table Difference. There we go. OK on that. And if we look, Table Difference has appeared in our toolbox and we can drag it into a data flow and we can continue to use it and in the next section we'll see just how we do that okay so we've got a data flow task here that I prepared earlier and we're going to take you through various parts of it to show you what's actually going on. So the first thing to notice is that we have data coming in from a raw file. The reason I've used a raw file is because that's got the least overhead on the overall execution of the data flow. It's the quickest way of getting data into a data flow. And because we're not actually demoing anything to do with um, speed of getting data into the data flow, I thought that was the best choice here. The data goes from the raw file component into a multicast and with that then sends it two different ways. On the left hand side of the data flow here you can see that we have a slowly changing dimension component. Many of you who are familiar with the SQL Server integration services will know that the slowly changing dimension component is provided out of the box. What it's typically used to do is to compare an incoming row of data with data in a table that is specified in one of the properties of that slowly changing dimension component. And what it does is assess whether that incoming row is a new row or a row that already exists in that destination. And if it does already exist, exist is it a new, is it been changed or has it stayed the same? So if you look here we have three outputs coming from our slowly changing dimension components and they signify those three different scenarios. Is the row new? Has it been changed or is it an unchanged row? Now if we look at the properties of our slow changing dimension component, you'll see that uh, we are comparing against the SQL statement, customer alternate key, marital status, number of cars owned, number of children at, at home from dbo.dimcustomer. You may recognize DIM customer as being a table in the AdventureWorks DW database, which is the sample database that you get with SQL Server. So what we're actually doing is using the customer alternate key, which is uh, the natural key of a customer, and comparing that against uh, the incoming customer alternate key, which, as you will see, we have defined coming out of our raw file. If we we'll take a look at the metadata here, you'll see that we have our customer alternate key. We also have our marital status, our number of children at home, and number of cars owned. So those are the fields that are going to be compared to see if an existing row has changed or not. Okay, so that's the slowly changing dimension component. Now over on the right hand side of this data flow we have our table difference component. Now this operates a little bit differently to the slowly changing dimension component. 
Whereas in the first case, uh, the lookup data is specified by a SQL statement, which is in a property of the slow and changing dimension component. What the table difference actually does is take is populate a cache from some incoming data from uh, some arbitrary data source, which in this case is an OLEDB source component. If we take a look at this, you'll see that we are selecting customer alternate key, marital status, number of children at home, number of cars owned from dbo.dim customer. So it's the same lookup set as the slowly changing dimension is comparing against. And the table difference component is doing pretty much the same as a slowly changing dimension component. It's going to determine whether each incoming row from our multicast is a new row that hasn't been seen in DIM customer before or whether it has been seen before and if it has been seen before has it changed or is it still the same and again we have those three outputs pertaining to those three scenarios. If we take a look inside the table difference component you'll see that the UI here is actually pretty simple. We have our four incoming rows in the cache and the table difference component has already determined that customer alternate key is the business key that we're going to be comparing against because that is the field upon which the input is sorted. You'll see that we have some options here. Uh, we can specify a field as being a key field, as I just explained. That's going to be the case with our customer alternate key. It can be a field that we compare against, and that's the case for our marital status, number of cars owned, and number of children at home. Or we can specify a couple of other things which we're not actually going to cover today. In our outputs tab, we have three outputs defined. We have our changed, we have our new, and we have our unchanged outputs. So again, we're determining the same as what the slowly changing dimension component is determining. I'll cancel out of that. So as I think you can see, we have two branches of this data flow task, and they both do pretty much the same thing. Uh, if we execute this thing, let's see what happens. Okay, so we have some data coming from our raw component, from our raw file, and it's going both ways, both to our slowly changing dimension and our table difference components. Our table difference component cache has been populated with 18,484 rows from our OLEDB source. And the data is now running through here, as you can see. And any second now, we should finish. There we go. Table difference side of our data flow is completed, and so is a slowly changing dimension component. And if you look, you'll see that we do have similar results as well. In both cases, we have 88,261 new rows, we have 17,137 unchanged rows, and we have 705 rows that have actually changed. So if I hit stop on this. So what have we seen? Well, hopefully you've realized that the table difference component is a lot friendlier to configure than the slow change in dimension component. So I didn't actually show the UI the slow change in dimension component, but trust me, uh, anyone will, who's used it will tell you it's not the easiest thing in the world to use. And it does have a distinct disadvantage in that every time you go through the wizard, that it presents to you, it recreates all of the downstream components, therefore you have to go and wire those up again. That's not the case with the table difference component, thankfully. You'll also notice that when we actually executed, the table difference component executed slightly quicker than the slowly changing dimension component. So, we have a component which is easier to configure, it's easier to use, and it seems to be a little bit quicker as well. In the next section, we'll dig into that a little bit more. Right, so what we did in the last section was compare the slowly changing dimension component and the table difference component in the same data flow. What we're going to do now is test them both for pure performance. So what I've actually done is created two new data flows and basically broke the existing data flow into two. So we have one data flow that works solely on the slowly changing dimension component and that's the one that you can see here at the moment. And we have uh, another data flow which works just using table difference. You can see here at the moment we've got data coming in from our raw file. It's the same raw file as before. 
it's going to our slowly changing dimension component and we have those same three outputs if I switch over to our DFT table difference pretty similar again we've got the same raw file we've got our cache being populated from the same table and we've got our same unchanged change and new outputs so we're going, to we're going to execute these two things separately to see how long they actually take and that will give us a much better idea of the pure performance of these two different components so if we go to, to DFT SCD I'll execute this so what we see is data coming in from our raw file for those that don't know what the slowly changing dimension component does is issue a query against the underlying lookup table for every single row that is coming in so in this case what we will see is approximately 100,000 queries being issued against our dim customer table and if we were to run SQL Server Profiler you would see those uh, 106,000, 103 queries being issued as it turns out. Okay, so that is our slowly changing dimension component. Uh, you'll see we've got the same results, 88,261 new rows, 17,137 unchanged and 705 changed rows. If we hop over to our progress tab, and we'll scroll down here, you can see in the bottom corner just about that this op this executed in 32 seconds. Okay. I'm going to hop back to our data flow. I'm going to stop that. So 32 seconds for our SCD. Now at this time we're in uh, the DFT table difference. I'll let's execute this and see how it goes. It's executing. Bringing all those rows, and there you go, it's finished. That happened in, let's take a look, less than four seconds. So I hope it's obvious what the difference is here. The slowly changing dimension component, 32 seconds, table difference, less than four seconds. That's more than eight times faster when you're actually using the component on its own. Hopefully, that demonstrates something that should be fairly obvious. The table difference component is much much faster in nearly all circumstances than the slowly changing dimension component. So what we've seen is not only is it e easier to configure, it's uh, certainly a more friendly UI, it's also a lot quicker when you actually execute it. So if you're finding that slowly changing dimension components is a problem for you for any of those reasons, chiefly that it's quite slow, then maybe the table difference component is an option for you. Thank you for watching, uh, we'll have more videos in this series coming up soon.